tuning in. Um, this lecture is going to cover our next concept in class, which is talking about economic systems. Uh, generally throughout the world, all countries or communities of people follow generally principles of about four major economic systems. And ultimately, out of those four, we only really see about three of them um, truly at play. But nevertheless, we will talk about all four. Uh, so here we go. Four major types are going to be command, market, mixed, and traditional. Again, these are the more four major ones that if you study economics that you would learn a little bit more about. Um, but generally speaking, you only actually see about three out of the four actually in play in the world, which are going to be command, mixed, and traditional. But nevertheless, market still has principles that get kind of brought into mixed economies, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So it uh, generally, when you study this kind of thing, you study all four, not just the three. Uh, so here's the first one, command. So in a command economy, the government actually is going to own or direct means of production. And on top of that, they're going to control the distribution of goods. So they control land, labor, capital, business, raw materials, you name it. They're going to con control every aspect of uh, goods and services being produced in a given economy. Um, they're also going to decide what needs to be produced, how much needs to be produced uh, in order to hopefully reach the overarching goal, which is satisfying all members of the community uh, in an equal way. Uh, so the whole rationale, again, is that the government is saying, well, if we are in control of the means of production for goods and services and the entire economy, we can distribute goods and services equally amongst all the citizens, right? Um, again, really, it doesn't quite always work out like that because you see this predominantly in communist or uh, totalitarian countries like the former Soviet Union, for example, where communism on paper sounds like a great idea. Everybody kind of gets the same thing. The government controls everything. Um, but ine inevitably, it never quite works out like it should. Um, so, for example, the government controls everything. So you have citizens paying taxes to the government to support social services like housing, health care for all citizens. However, the citizens don't really have any voice in all that. Again, a communist country, there's no elections. There's just one party controlling everything. So uh, inevitably, people kind of get fed up and it doesn't really work out uh, like they want it to. But that's the command economy. Uh, the next one's market. So in a market economy, individuals and private groups are kind of the key players here. They're making decisions about what to produce and how much to produce. Uh, consumers in the form of shoppers choose what products they will or will not buy. Businesses make more of what they believe consumers actually want. Um, all of this is owned by individuals and corporations, so it's completely in the private sector. There's little to no government intervention. Uh, it's all kind of controlled by, by private partners. Um, it's based on that whole free enterprise principle that private individuals or groups have the right to own property and businesses will make a profit only with limited government interference. So again, this is the whole idea that government is laissez-faire. They're going to completely stay out of it. Um, in a free enterprise system, people are choosing what jobs they will do and for whom they work. Again, it's the whole concept of free choice, private uh, ownership of goods and services, consumers really choosing what they want. Um, however, no country in the world is a pure market economy. All right? The U.S., for example, uh, are mixed economies. So there's always going to be some form of government invention for things such as safety regulations, fairness, uh, anti-corruption, you name it. So on a pure sense, as a concept, market economies actually don't exist. Um, a completely free market economy does not exist in a pure form uh, because there's always going to be some kind of government intervention which would become a mixed economy which is the next one so a mixed economy is one where it blends the combination of free market enterprise uh, guidelines so private ownership and free choice but it also you're getting a little bit more government oversight uh, in the process so the government's going to support and regulate through decisions that affect the marketplace. So you're talking about consumer protection agencies, um, again, safety regulations, trade regulations, uh, price controls, you name it. It's all in the name of trying to make things fair and free. Uh, make sure things are competitive, try to limit monopolies, um, companies taking advantage of consumers. Um, and then governments in this sub are actually gonna be using tax revenues to actually support social services, but again, 
this is where compared to a command economy and command governments um, mixed, you're going to get a lot more input from actual individuals rather than the government controlling everything. Um, the last one's gonna be traditional. So uh, you go from command, which is all government control, to pure free market, which is complete private control, to kind of the Goldilocks, which is a mix, which is a little bit of government control, but mostly private ownership. Uh, traditional is kind of on its own island. So this is talking about really the old school, old world way of life, where habit and custom are actually gonna determine all the rules for economic activity. So this really comes into play when you're thinking about more nomadic civilizations with uh, a lot more like village type setups or agricultural civilizations. Um, individuals aren't necessarily free to make decisions on what they would like to have, but rather you're going to have customs and kind of the elders uh, or ancestors dictating what should be done uh, in that community economically. Um, and kind of continuing on that thread, well, goods are actually going to be produced coming from a source near society. So again, you're talking about you know, hunting, gathering, agriculture, really local base. There's not much trade going on. Uh, there's not a lot of outside influence going on. Really, the government is limited to that small community via more of kind of like a, a council of elders, things of that nature. Um, and generally, everybody buys in because if everyone takes part, then society succeeds. Um, and you kind of you, you produce exactly what everybody needs more or less, and you don't overproduce or underproduce. It's all about kind of um, providing for the community, providing for families. Um, so again, you you would see this kind of in uh, small fishing villages up in northern Canada, um, where like kind of they need to follow traditional culture and uh, traditional economic setups and more or less traditional ways of life to uh, sustain up in the Arctic climate for thousands of years. So, yes, traditional economies do exist but they are limited in scope scale uh, and frequency so you do see them just not very often and they're kind of in these remote places where you still have kind of traditional ways of life uh, dating back thousands of years so those are the four main setups again you have command you have free market mixed and traditional you really only see command mixed and traditional again pure free market economies don't exist uh, just because there is always some kind of government intervention is it pretty much impossible to ensure complete private ownership uh, in the modern world. Um, so here's a couple of videos, again, talking about crash course, going over these economic systems in more detail, and then a fun parody one, the second one. You don't have to watch them. I do recommend that you really do watch the uh, crash course one, though. It does go into a little bit more detail. Um, and then this is just a reminder about the unit project. This is also on Google Classroom, but basically... We're going to take those economic systems and we're going to combine them to what we've been learning about with uh, trade uh, and get to kind of apply those two concepts to the real world a little bit more. So you're trying to look into a country that's not in the U.S. or China just because those are too easy uh, and prepare a brief presentation. So this is in Google Slides format. Uh, it could be a video. It could be a poster. You can name it. Um, about the economic climate of that country that includes well, what kind of economic system does this country have? I can guarantee you 99% of the time it's going to be mixed uh, What are the major imports exports the country has? What are some of those trade barriers and stimulus that they experience? What's the overall health of the economy and then who are the major trade partners of your country? So that would be in a project you guys have a couple weeks to get that done um, Before we transition into the next unit would be unit I believe number four uh, so that's where we'll be going. But again, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, please email me. Uh, but again, hope you're doing all right.